Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to all participants. My name is Cindy Lee. I'm the chair of RFP UK, and we are very happy to have you with us this evening. That promises to be a really compelling story. Now, Human, Human Rights Day is observed every year on the 10th of December. For RFP UK, today marks the backbone of our undertakings, as human rights is one of um, the cornerstones of peace, we believe. So our lecture tonight is named the Helen Mayer Memorial Lecture. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Helen. She was one of our major benefactors and she was a volunteer at the World Congress of Religions for Peace during the 1970s. She was the honorary secretary for some years. We are both obliged and honored to extend her wish to advocate for human rights, which remains a key global priority for all 90 national and six regional interreligious councils within the global religions for, the, for peace movement. So what more fitting remembrance of Helen Mayer can we bring when we seek to honor her than presenting to you the trailblazing story of Sally Becker, who spent decades through hardships and dangers in upholding the rights of children in conflict zones. So over to you, Ravinda. Thank you, Cindy. Um, warm greetings, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today on such an important day, Human Rights Day. Sally works as a humanitarian and has been well documented. Her work has been well documented, especially in Bosnia where she became known as the Angel of Mostar after rescuing wounded children and their families from besieged hospitals. Responding to requests to help victims of the war in Ukraine this year, she organized the evacuation of over 200 orphan children from the conflict zones. Sally, we are honored to have you with us today to share your story. Thank you so much, Ravinda, and thank you, Cindy. And so when the war broke out in Ukraine in 2022, I was asked if I would help. So we brought out 20 odd children and their mothers. I contacted Lord Harrington, who was Minister of Ukrainian Refugees. And I told him what was happening and he said, I'm on it and I'll do everything I can to help. And within two weeks, we managed to get visas for them all to come to the UK and Virgin agreed to fly them all on, on a special flight. And they, they flew us, Virgin Airlines, sent this Airbus specifically for the families and flew us to Britain. And from there, they were taken to Scotland and they're still being cared for in Edinburgh by the Scottish authorities. But also I was told that there were a lot more orphan children who needed help. This time though, I spoke with Cindy from um, Religions for Peace and Cindy asked me if there was some way that Religions for Peace could help. So I said, it would be amazing because there's all these children who need to be rescued. And with such a small charity, we just don't have the funds to do it. So she said, let me speak to my board. And she spoke to her board. They approved the mission. So I was able to go back and I went to Niplo, which is where the children, a lot of the women and children were based. And I was there with Dr. Marino, so that we had a pediatrician with us, and um, Kenny Green, a volunteer who'd offered to come and to help me with logistics and security. And we got permission from the Deputy Prime Minister of Ukraine to take, uh, they were all together, um, 162 women and children who needed to be evacuated, 91 of them from Dnipro. So they provided us with a with a train, very old train, 
three of the carriages were, were for us, were assigned for us. And we had to wait in a railway siding for about three hours in these very, very hot carriages because this was back in May. Everybody was boiling. You couldn't open the windows. There were only two toilets. And then finally, they hooked up the carriages to the main engine and we were able to leave. And we were on this train for 22 hours traveling to Lviv. And when we arrived in Lviv, we were then joined by all these other women and children from frontline areas who'd been brought to us. And we spent a couple of nights there in Lviv and then we set off to Poland. This is when we arrived on the train in Lviv. You can see there's quite a few. You can't see all of them because I didn't have panoramic on my camera and neither did whoever took this photo. Anyway, um, we were able to take them to a hotel for a couple of weeks near the border. And then it was time, I thought, to go to the UK. And we were suddenly told that the visas were being refused that Britain were not going to be able to help. And I was mortified, I didn't know what to do because it had been taken for granted that they would be able to come the way the others had. And I couldn't understand it because nobody from the Home Office had told me it wasn't going to be possible. And I'd spoken to a lot of people, I'd messaged, I'd contacted Lord Harrington directly, I'd spoken to his senior advisor, I'd written to Boris Johnson. I did everything I could possibly do and it didn't help. So we, we had no choice but to take them to a refugee camp in Warsaw. And it was really bad. There were beds, hundreds and hundreds of beds side by side. They had to eat in a, in a dining room with hundreds and hundreds of other people. And of course they were devastated because they thought they were coming to England straight away. And I had to leave them, but before I did, I was able to use some of the funds from Religions for Peace to ensure that they had fresh food, fruit, decent food. Um, I bought phones for, for those families that didn't have mobile phones so that they could keep in contact with us, with their families in Ukraine. And I then started my campaign together with Cindy to try and get permission to bring them across. It took us three months and we eventually managed to get Wales to agree to take them on the super sponsor programme. They were only able to take around 60, but we also managed to bring some in on the private sponsor scheme in England, where we got sponsors for them through friends across the country. And finally, in August, we flew them on flights paid for by the Steve Morgan Foundation. And just, just recently, I received a message from one of the mothers. She said, hi, Sally, I want to thank you again. We've been living in Britain for three months. The children study at a local school and learn the language little by little. There is always light, no bombs and sirens. There are no words to say thank you. And it's not just a thank you to me. This is a thank you to all the people who helped us, to all the supporters, to the people who donated to our charity, to Religions for Peace, for making this mission possible.